Hey, welcome to the crux. In this video, we continue our discussion on the diamond code by picking up where we left in the previous video. So if you recall, we discussed how TGA in the piece of DNA is represented in the diamond form, where the GC on the horizontal axes form the complementary basis. Now it is important to note that the diamond code is read from top to bottom by moving anti-clockwise. So the codon that specifies the amino acid in this diamond is TGT with C in the parentheses. Usually C is omitted from the codon description because it is implied through the base pairing partner in the center of our code TGT, and that is the base G in this case. So something important to keep in mind when dealing with the diamond code is that the code on DNA reads TGA, but the code for specifying the amino acid is actually TGT. Since in total four bases are required to make this diamond structure possible, and hence specifying the amino acid in three dimensions, the cardinality of the diamond code is four. So now we move to the bases of specifying amino acids in the diamond code, and that is symmetry. George Kumar saw that the amino acid side chains were largely symmetrical, and therefore he postulated that the diamonds or the holes between the base pairs could be flipped side to side or end to end, and that wouldn't change the meaning of the code. So let's understand this by example. So you have TAG code in the DNA, and under the diamond code, this could be read as TAC, or it could be side flipped and read as TAC or it could be end flipped and read as CTT. And then you can even side flip this to read it as CAT. So all these combinatorial flips would produce the same diamond conformation, specifying the same one amino acid. We can do the same exercise in form of diamond code. So for the same TAG DNA code, you have this diamond code and you can side flip around the horizontal axes and you would get another equivalent diamond code. And then you can again end flip it to get another diamond code. And then another side flip to get another diamond code. You can see that you have TAC, TTC, CTT, and CAT. Now notice that this is exactly what we have derived already using the DNA strand flips. Since George Gamow was a mathematician, he used 1, 2, 3, and 4 to represent A, T, G, and C. So you'd have two types of symmetries, one set with 1, 2 on the horizontal axes and another set with 3, 4 on the horizontal axes. And each of these sets will give 32 codes and 10 amino acids, which will total to about 64 codes and 20 amino acids. So this set that we worked on has four codes from the 32 possibilities of the 1-2 symmetry, where 1 is equivalent to A and 2 is equivalent to T. And all these four codes specify the same amino acid. In 1954, when George published his paper, he didn't say which code specified what amino acid. So his model of diamond code is purely theoretical. So just to understand better, here's an example of 3-4 symmetry diamond code, where all these four codes specify the same amino acid. Now that we have the basic understanding of how symmetries can be used in the diamond code, we can derive the 32 possible codes under the 1-2 symmetry, which is the AT along the horizontal axes. I would encourage you to pause this video and try it out yourself.
other cell. Now we have 32 codes split according to their redundancy in their specificity toward the amino acid and there are 10 such redundant categories and each box is one amino acid and we have 10 in total. Now you can derive the three four symmetries as well using this template by simply replacing two with four and one with three along the horizontal axes. And likewise, you will see another set of 32 codes split among 10 amino acids. So here you have it. You now know how the diamond code works in theory. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment in the section below, or share it with your friends. And if you'd like me to cover any particular topic, comment your suggestions. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more knowledge. See you in the next video.